Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone. It's good to have you joining us here today. My name is Anthony Corson, and I am the director for the College of Health and Human Sciences Student Success Center. I'm here to welcome you to our Student Success Center's live webinar on advising services in our college. Our Student Success Center serves as the central point of contact for all newly admitted students to the college. In other words, we are the folks that will work with you during orientation this summer. We are also the team that provides general education advising for the college and can answer questions related to academic policies and procedures on campus. Often the words college and university are used interchangeably, but let me explain the difference between these two terms and what they refer to here at SJSU. University refers to the entire SJSU campus, including all the various service units, such as financial aid, housing, etc as well as all the colleges. You can think of the San Jose State University as a universe of colleges. So we are just one of the colleges represented at the university and each college has its own student success center. But of course, we like to think of ourselves as being the best student success center, at least we try to be. And we hope to prove this to you here today and when you join us at orientation this summer. The College of Health and Human Sciences therefore is an umbrella term referring to all the majors in the various departments in our college. Here's a quick listing of the undergraduate programs housed in our college and for which the Student Success Center provides advising services. Hospitality, Justice Studies and Forensic Science, which are in the same department, Kinesiology, Nutrition and Packaging, also in the same department, Public Health and Recreation, again in the same department, Nursing, and social work. Our graduate level programs offering master's degrees and doctorates include the various departments already mentioned, as well as audiology and occupational therapy. So our services in the Student Success Center focus on providing advising for students in these majors. Our College Success Center, the CHHS Student Success Center, has a unique team of caring professionals looking forward to meeting you. Very shortly here, the rest of the Student Success Advising Team will be introducing themselves so that you can get to know the professionals invested in your student success. But before then, let me quickly review the agenda for today's event. We began with the welcome, and soon the rest of the team will introduce themselves. Next, our graduation specialist, Jeremy, will discuss information on how the event will run technologically. This will be followed by the video presentation on Student Success Center services. After that, our team will elaborate on specific advising topics that we think are important to you. Lastly, you will have an opportunity to ask any questions you might have during our Q&A session to be moderated by our Assistant Director, Maya, and Program Coordinator, Talisha, with the assistance of our Health Professions Advisor, Hugo. Next, let me turn it over to our assistant director. Take it away, Maya. Thank you, Tony. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. My name is Maya Moore, and I am the assistant director as well as the peer tutoring coordinator for our Success Center. We're really happy that you've joined us today, and we're excited to share with you all the services that we have to offer at the Success Center. And so you'll get a chance to also know us a little bit before orientation. Um, with that, I'll pass it on to Hugo. Forgot to, I forgot to unmute my mic. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Hugo, also known as Hugo or Ugo. My role is to provide uh, comprehensive academic and health professions advising. I also serve as a liaison to the kinesiology and hospitality, tourism, and event management departments, as well as the Chicanx Latinx Student Success Center, where I have drop-in advising hours one afternoon per week. As an advisor, my goal is to help you get the best academic experience possible while at SJSU, and also to help you identify and achieve your academic and career goals. I try to do this by offering comprehensive academic advising that includes general education and graduate graduation planning, basically which class to take and in which sequence. As a health professional advisor, I try to stay up to date with any changes in advising as it pertains to occupational therapy, audiology, nursing, 
physical therapy, physician assistant, and other health professions such as medicine and dentistry. In the near future, we plan to expand our health professions advising programs and add more resources. So keep an eye out for us during orientation. Uh, that's it for me. Up next is Talisha. Thanks, Hugo. Hi, everyone. My name is Talisha Teague, and I am the Academic Advisor and Programs Coordinator for the Center. And I'm also a liaison for the Public Health major, the Recreation major, and the Social Work major. Congratulations again on your acceptance, and I look forward to working with you this summer and fall orientations. And here is Jeremy. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy Hansen. I'm the uh, graduation specialist for our department. Um, while all my colleagues are more than capable of answering any questions you might have related to advising or graduations, just happens to be what I specialize in. In the future, I hope to, you know, add some programs to our roster of uh, things to help you guys graduate easier and faster. Um, so we're going to get started with our video shortly, uh, but before we jump into what we have prepared for you today, I just want to make sure everybody is familiar with Zoom webinars. Um, first of all, you might have already noticed chat is disabled. Uh, we want to avoid Zoom bombing, so we won't allow participants today to chat, share video, or audio. However, we will be doing a Q&A session later, uh, question and answer, and we'd love to know what you need more information on. If you check out the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see a Q&A button. We want to encourage you to use this function to ask questions during the Q&A portion of the presentation. We will be answering some of the questions live and some over chat, but you'll be able to see the answers to all the questions that we give um, if we answer via chat. If you're having technical issues with Zoom, please give eCampus a call at 408-924-2337. And I'm posting that number in the chat box right now for you all. Um, now I'd like to show you all the video that we put together as a Student Success Center, just to give you a better idea of what we can do for you. So we just ask that you try and pay attention to the video and not use the uh, Q&A function during the video, at least until we get to the Q&A portion of our presentation. So I'm going to share my screen and we will get that video started here. Hello and welcome to San Jose State University. We are the College of the Health and Human Sciences Student Success Center, and this virtual tour will provide you information on different types of services we offer, including general education advising, peer tutoring, career advice, and so much more. We are unique being one center with two locations in Macquarie Hall and in the Health Building. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, however, our two physical locations are currently closed until further notice. If you have any questions or would like more information, our contact information will be provided to you at the end of this tour. So let's get started. Our mission here at the College of Health and Human Sciences Student Success Center is to be the central point of contact for all new and continuing students pursuing College of Health and Human Sciences majors to provide advising and academic support related resources to facilitate student success. Our vision is to continue to seek innovation in advising and student success in order to facilitate students' timely graduation from San Jose State and preparation for graduate school and career opportunities. Here at the College of Health and Human Sciences Student Success Center, we serve all College of Health and Human Sciences majors and students who are interested in our majors, which include Hospitality, Tourism and Event Management, Justice Studies and Forensic Sciences, Kinesiology, Nursing, Nutritional Science, Dietetics and Packaging, Public Health and Recreation, and Social Work.
Our staff defines student success having academic achievement and a timely graduation, which if you're an incoming freshman is four years, and if you are a transfer student is two years. Student retention is based by making steady progress semester to semester and year to year. Being successful as a College of Health and Human Sciences major is reflective based on the student's interests and utilizing academic success tools, including time management and study skills strategies, gaining knowledge regarding your personal own learning style, and developing an education plan for graduation. We also provide help with GE advising, helping you transition to the university life, academic planning and time management, learning campus resources, navigating the MySJSU and MyGPS suite of online advising tools, choosing a College of Health and Human Sciences major, and accessing laptops to be used in the Student Success Center. Here at San Jose State, you will have two advisors, General Education Student Success Center advisors and major faculty department advisors. Here at the Student Success Center, we can help you with academic planning, graduation advising, reviewing your general education classes, and academic policies and procedures. Your major faculty department advisors who are experts in their field can help you with major course planning, internship guidance, career mentoring, and grad school planning. Our peer tutors who are based at the Health Building location are ready to assist you with Biology 65, Biology 66, Chemistry 30A, Health Science 67, and Statistics 95. The College of Health and Human Sciences Student Success Center also provides health profession co comprehensive advising, which can help you get a career in occupational therapy, physical therapy, nursing, audiology, being a physician assistant, and so much more. We also help with career explorations and offer graduate school advising, including medical and dental school. Kristen Keller, who is a career counselor for the San Jose State University Career Center, is our liaison and has appointments available specifically for College of Health and Human Sciences majors. majors. Everything from setting up your resume and how to look for a job and or internships and building professional skills, Kristen will be ready to help you. Our unofficial motto for the Student Success Center is to meet, study, and learn. Meet other students in your class or major, and while here, study in our dedicated space or even reserve small study rooms. Remember, you can check out laptops to be used in the Student Success Center and get assistance using your MySJSU portal and utilizing campus resources. This completes our tour. We hope that you enjoyed this presentation and we are looking forward to working with you in the future. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions or would like to set up an appointment, please click the link which will take you to our website. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. On behalf of everyone here at the College of Health and Human Sciences Student Success Center, stay healthy, 
be safe, and we wish you all the best in your academic endeavors. Smarten up. Hello, everyone. So we hope you enjoyed watching the video. Let us next elaborate on certain topics from the video that we think you will find important as you join us here at SJSU. I would like to start by elaborating on what student success means to us. As you saw in the video, student success means students graduating in a timely manner in a major reflective of your strengths and interests. But it also means having a caring professional advisor by your side to help provide answers to questions not easily found online, especially as it pertains to class selection and academic support, as well as providing assistance with crafting an educational graduation plan specifically tailored to your needs. These are our areas of expertise, so please do take advantage of our services. Also, as you heard in the video, we have two types of advisors in the college. We have general education or GE advisors found in our center and two faculty advisors also referred to as major advisors in our various major, major departments in the College of Health and Human Sciences. We work hard in the college to provide seamless advising. Each member of our team serves as a liaison to one or more of our major departments. This helps greatly with communication and updating information that needs to be shared with students. During your first year or two as a newly admitted student, we will work with you to assist you in meeting a very important component to your degree here at SJSU, the general education component. We in the center try to help students select courses that can double count for GEs and for the major requirements as it regards to upper division GE requirements. In this way, we can help you to streamline your degree and shorten your time to graduation. Once you are done with your GEs, we will hand you off to the major advisor, but we are always here to answer questions about academic policies and procedures. We all know the major well and will get you started and can keep you moving along in the major, but for specific detailed questions in the major regarding such things as internships, senior seminars, et cetera, we refer you to the faculty advisors in the major departments for further assistance. Lastly, I would like to mention our team of peer mentors who are students like yourself. They work at our front desk and also with students one-on-one. -on -one. Our team of peer mentors assist with our academic support program, which aims at helping students who have dropped below a C average to return to academic standing, to good academic standing because maintaining a C average is a graduation requirement. Not that anyone participating here today in this webinar will need that assistance, but if you do, if your GPA drops below a C average and you're not meeting graduation requirements, we can provide the help that you need in the Student Success Center to return to good academic standing. Our peer mentors excel at mentoring students in time management, developing better study skills, as well as assisting students with leveraging their own unique learning style in developing better study strategies. Next, let's give our attention to Hugo's presentation on health professions advising. Hugo, please. Hello, everybody. Let me go from here. All right, so I'm here to talk about the health professions advising and give you more details about what we do in, our, in the uh, advising program. One of uh, our, the main component of our health professional advising program is the one-on-one -on -one in-person advising sessions where we'll uh, review uh, GEs, we'll go over any career aspirations you may have, we'll help you choose a major if, you're, if, you, need to if you want to change majors or explore other majors, and then we'll also talk about the requirements for graduate programs. The next major component for our program is the workshops. We uh, schedule throughout the academic year uh, a, seri a series of workshops to cover the overview of each profession. And then later, later on in the season, the more specific application workshops. The, the key ones for application workshops are 
for occupational therapy. We have a homegrown master's in occupational therapy program, and we have a newly minted audiology uh, graduate program. So those are the most, the most important ones that we feature in our workshops. We also invite health professions programs to campus. Uh, not everybody wants to go out of occupational therapy or audiology. So we, uh, we have brought to campus representatives from physician assistant and physical therapy graduate schools. <clears throat> we also serve an advisory role with our student organizations, such as the Preoccupational Therapy Association, the Pre-Physical Therapy Club, and the Pre-Physician Assistant Club. Uh, <clears throat> later on, as you're graduating or after you graduated, we help you prepare to apply to the health professions program by helping you develop uh, personal statements and or edit them. We also give you uh, helpful pointers about the application process. For example, uh, when's a good time to, uh, to request letters of recommendation? What kind of letter of recommendation? How do I do that? So those are the kinds of things we can help you with in our health professional advising program. As mentioned earlier, we're trying to add more resources and emphasize this more. So keep an eye out for announcements regarding that change. So come see us early as you want. No question is too basic. Uh, that's it for me. Let, let me introduce you to Talisha. Sorry, everyone, my video is not working, so I'll just go ahead and share my screen. All right, everyone, so for the Career Center team here at San Jose State University is dedicated to providing resources to you throughout your time here and beyond. When the fall 2020 semester starts, be sure to, be, to visit with Kristen Keller, our College of Health and Human Sciences Student Success Center liaison, where she can visit with you via Zoom and in our Student Success Center. If you have a time conflict, however, you can visit with any one of our Career Center counselors in the administration building who can assist you with a career roadmap to follow and help you identify resources on where you want to go, how you want to get there, and what you'll need to do. The Career Roadmap guides you through four milestones, including exploring your options, identifying your skills, building experience, and launching your career. Now let's talk about the Health and Human Sciences International Experience Requirement. The goal for this requirement is to prepare you to live and work in an increasingly globalized world. Studying abroad has been shown to increase student success and our requirement is designed to provide global learning experiences taught by San Jose State professors that are flexible, affordable, and relevant towards your degree. Requirements include traveling outside the United States for a minimum of nine days and you must earn academic credit. So hopefully during the winter 2020 and or summer 2021, programs will be offered where you could meet this College of Health and Human Sciences International Experience requirement while fulfilling an upper division general education class or a major class at the same time. Dean scholarships are available, which can range between $750 to $1,000. And remember, this is, supposed to, this is supposed to enlighten and quite possibly be a once in a life chance opportunity for you. However, if you are unsure about traveling outside the United States or you have additional questions, you can make an appointment with either one of us during the fall semester to discuss different options and our alternatives to see which program works best for you since this is handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Now I'll go ahead and give you guys a minute to screenshot or take a picture of this slide. So to stay up to date with our center, we are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So all of the success centers like Humanities and Arts, the College of Business, Academic Advising Retention Services, and even university resources like the SJSU Library and the SJSU Food Pantry, we all follow one another. And we're usually messaging one another on different deadlines, 
contests, scholarships, and events. So be sure to like us on Facebook. You can find us at CHHS Student Success Center, or you can find, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Our handle is CHHS underscore SSC, because usually when I post an event or any type of scholarship or contest on one platform, I'm usually posting on all three. And now here's Jeremy to talk to you about the graduation services. All right, hello again, everybody. Let me share my screen here. There we go. All right, so as a graduation specialist for the college, one of my big tasks lately has been getting our schools to adopt an online graduation application process. In the past, you had to submit a few paper forms, get a few signatures prior to applying. Now, however, you can go right to your MySJSU account as soon as you're eligible to apply, click a few buttons, and you're all set. Uh, your My Progress Report is very important to this process, as this tool will be tracking your degree progress during your time here at San Jose State University. Once your My Progress Report is filled with all the green check marks it can handle, you'll be all set to get your degree. This will allow our faculty to give you more attention towards mentorship and major advising, in addition allowing us to process your applications to graduate faster. Soon, um, as soon as we get further away from this huge project, I hope to have start different initiatives to help our students with graduation. So definitely stay tuned for more information there. So one of the other things I do is I also handle our website, um, putting things up, taking things down, so on and so forth. Uh, our website address is www.sjsu.edu slash chhs-ssc. And I'll post a, uh, the web address in the chat box as soon as I'm done with my little segment here. Um, so we try and keep this site up to date with our services that we provide for students as well as instructions for making appointments with us. It's especially important during these times. Um, you can visit our site for information on our tutoring schedule and services, which Milo will expand upon here in a minute. Our events, information on how to get major in career advising, in addition to pre-professional health advising with Hugo, and um, change of major information. Uh, our school has been working on updating our pages to a new web format, so you should see that change go live for our own site this summer, although the information on it shouldn't change, it's just looking a little bit nicer. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Maya for information on tutoring as well as how the Q&A session is going to go. think. All right. Hello. I hope everyone can see and hear me now. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed the presentation so far. As I mentioned before, in addition to being the assistant director for the center, I'm also the peer tutoring coordinator. And so I just wanted to share a little bit more information about our peer tutoring services. Um, at our Success Center, we have a dedicated team of peer tutors. They've all taken the classes that they are tutoring in, of course, and they have excelled in those classes. And they're really excited to share their knowledge with all of you. We chose anatomy, physiology, intro to chemistry, and statistics as our tutoring subjects because they represent the main prerequisites or preparatory courses for most of our majors. And they also tend to be a bit challenging. Now, I imagine as transfer students, most of you are, have already completed these prerequisite courses at your community college. But just in case, we still want you to know that these services are available to you. So if you do take these classes in the fall or the future, we encourage you to meet with the tutor early and often. Our tutoring services are free and they're open on a drop-in basis the most convenience to all of you. We post our schedule for peer tutoring at the beginning of the semester, so please keep an eye out for that. Um, and just to make a point on that, at San Jose State, um, all the units on campus share important information and deadlines, mostly through my SJSU message center and through SGSU email. So we really encourage you to check those message centers or your email inbox frequently so you don't miss out. 
And so I'd like to acknowledge that um, I know that most of you have questions about fall 2020 and specifically what classes to take in the fall. And while we would love to answer all of those registration questions, um, this webinar isn't the best format to add, answer specific individualized questions. So we're going to ask you to hold those types of questions until an advising appointment or until orientation this summer. And for the webinar, we'd like to focus on uh, more general questions about advising services and academic support on campus. Um, but that doesn't mean there is not a lot for you to do between now and orientation. Let me move on to my next slide. So what you can do is complete next steps. That's first, right? This is where you choose San Jose State as your university, and we certainly hope that you do. You need to complete that process by May 1st. That's the deadline to choose San Jose State, to choose an orientation date, and also to pay the um, uh, orientation deposit. After May 1st and after you complete Next Steps, you'll receive two uh, online modules. One is Spartan Link and the other is Spartan Ready. Spartan Link is a pre-orientation program. It's 100% uh, online and it is mandatory. You'll get more information about that from the team at New Students and Family Programming. Spartan Ready is a series of modules that was created by um, AARS, another advising unit on campus, um, that basically gives you a walk through some of our resources, our online resources like MyGPS, which includes MySGSU, my roadmaps, um, my progress, and so on. There are also tutorials on how to register for classes. So it's giving you kind of a, a head start before orientation and before your registration date is posted. And then finally, there is the directed self-placement. Uh, many of you have probably heard of the writing skills test or the WST. Um, this summer, the WST has been suspended uh, due to you know, COVID-19 and the social distancing and shelter in place guidelines that we all must follow. So in its place, the university has created the DSP, which stands for Directed Self-Placement. It will take you about 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes to complete. And it's really a self-reflection about your experience with writing um, and what would be the best writing course for you to start with at San Jose State, whether that's 100A or 100W. It's really important for you to finish that DSP before you register for that writing class. And so summer orientation, um, whatever date you choose through next steps will be the date that we meet with you for summer orientation. And that orientation is mandatory. Uh, it will be online and a platform similar to today. And at that time, you'll meet all of us again and we'll give you an in-depth advising presentation. And then you will break out into smaller groups to meet with major advisors from each of your departments and get more um, you know, detailed and specific information about your major programs and also have an opportunity to talk with them about the curriculum, ask questions about courses, and so on. So there's going to be a lot of great information for you that day. So I want to point out that since you're transfer students, you will be able to register for classes before orientation. Your registration date is going to post on June 8th in my SJSU, so keep an eye out for that. And then the earliest that you would be able to register is June 15th. And so we don't want you to really wait until orientation to answer or ask any questions that you have about registration. Um, if you do have questions about classes, please make an appointment with one of our advisors. Uh, we will most likely still be um, providing our services online or via phone. So what you need to do to, to set up an appointment is to call 408-924-2910 if you're calling between the hours of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. And then you'd call 408-924-8601 if you're calling between the hours of 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. We're going to start um, holding those advising appointments 
um, after our final exams close um, on campus. And so the earliest date you could start a scheduling appointment would be May 18th. That's Monday, May 18th. So um, I think that that's it for this part of the presentation and we're ready to transition to the Q&A portion. As Jeremy mentioned earlier, you'll find the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen when you just hover your mouse at the bottom. You can type your questions there. Uh, myself and Talisha will be monitoring the questions and we'll answer most of them live. Some questions we'll answer um, just in written form in the chat. So if you don't hear your, answer que your question answered live, please check the Q&A box um, for a response from Talisha or another member of our team. And with that, I'll welcome everyone back and I will stop my screen share so we can get started. Thank you, Maya. Absolutely. So let's see what questions we have here. All right, the first question is related to the DSP. So uh, Jeremy, I'll ask you to, actually, yeah, Jeremy, I'll ask you to answer this question. If we have already completed our English courses needed for our major, do we need to complete the DSP? So I would recommend doing the DSP even if you have completed the English courses for your major, just so you know for sure that you're going into the right class. Because essentially the DSP is gonna ask you to choose between two options, at least for this fall due to the whole COVID-19 situation. That's gonna be a class that's LLD 100A or English 100A. I think they may have changed the prefix for that, but it's usually been known as LLD 100A. And that would be a substitute for the writing skills test. Okay, now if you get the direct and self placement, you get through it and you feel that you're more fit for your 100W class, that's totally fine. Just keep in mind the 100W, usually only students are allowed to take that if they've passed the WST. So if the direct and self placement says that you may want to consider taking the LLD 100A, it may be in your best interest to do so, just so you don't put yourself at a disadvantage when you go into your upper division writing course. Now, as far as English requirements go, generally English requirements are GE related courses. So as transfer students, there's a pretty good chance you probably already have your English classes completed. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think there's any like specifically English classes re uh, required for any of our majors. Um, but, uh, but yeah, do the directed self-placement. It does help to know where they think they should place you, but ultimately that's how it's gonna work for fall. Thank you, Jeremy. There is a question uh, regarding the phone number. So I might have spoken a little bit too fast in my desire to get to the Q&A. So the question is, can you share the phone number once again to set up an appointment with an advisor? So yes, I can do that. So again, just for everyone's benefit, the earliest you can meet with an, one of our advisors is May 18th. That's because we want to dedicate our time right now to continuing students and getting them through finals, and then we'll transition our focus to all of you. So the numbers are, if you're calling between the hours of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., that's 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., please call 408-924-2910. If you're calling between the hours of 1 p.m. and 5 p.m., 1 p.m. through 5 p.m. We ask you to call 408-924-8601. Okay, I'm sorry if I rattled through that a little bit too quickly before. Okay, I answered that question. Uh, this next question is related to the DSP again. How long does the DSP take and is it a pass fail test? Um, the DSP is going to take you between 15 and 20 minutes, so not a lot of time. Part of that is, you know, uploading, um, you know, a writing sample from a community college or from your transfer university. And basically, it's basically a self-assessment or self-reflection on your experience with writing previously um, to help you choose the best course. It's not a pass-fail test. It's not a test at all. It's really just a self-reflection or self-assessment. Um, it's not mandatory per se, but it is recommended so that you choose the appropriate um, 
upper division writing course. Okay. Let's see, this next question is related to classes. And so again, um, we won't be able to get into specific um, class registration questions today because each one of you is unique, right? Um, you have different majors, different interests, different courses that you've already completed. And so we'll be able to answer those questions um, either at orientation or through a one-on-one -on -one advising session. Um, when you make that appointment in May. All right, the next question is related to an associate's degree to transfer in psychology. Um, I think I'll, I'll post this one to Tony. Um, I'm actually completing an associate's degree to transfer in psychology at Chabot. I hadn't initially thought I would finish and was wondering how that would impact upper division courses and getting classes. Um, it shouldn't have any effect. I mean, it is, it will, it's helpful to have an associate's degree for transfer or an ADT. Um, because that indicates that you've met all your GE requirements, so you wouldn't be held to any lower division GE requirements here. You would be held to upper division GE requirements with or without the ADT. If you have the ADT, it just completes the lower division GEs. Um, you might be able to transfer here in the fall and then later complete the ADT at the community college. Um, during the subsequent summer if there's just a few classes that are remaining. Um, but really it doesn't have um, a great effect on your transfer here. Um, it's probably best to make an appointment with one of our advisors so we can sit down and look at everything that you've taken um, and better assess the situation. But that's the best general answer I can give you right now. Thank you, Tony. I think to answer, um Maybe that type of question might be better for a, a like a one on one appointment so we can really review all of the classes that you've taken and what would be best for you. Yes, and I posted in the chat the information that you shared, Maya, um, regarding what number to call during what times. And also our website, if you visit our website, um, which Jeremy introduced earlier, you'll see um, instructions on how to make an appointment. Right. On that website, you'll also see a link for um, scheduling an appointment online. That link won't work for you all um, until you're actually matriculated students and on campus in the fall. So if you happen to click that link and it doesn't work, um, it's not supposed to, not yet. So don't um, be thrown off by that. Just call one of those phone numbers. Yes, that's why it's best to call. So there is a question related to public health. And so this will go to Talisha. Mm -hmm. um, what types of jobs can I get with my public health degree? That's a great question. So with the public health degree and recreation department as well, they are changing um, their coursework this semester. So um, with public health, a lot of students usually go into nursing, but also you can do like a community health um, specialist, um, health and public policy officer, um, even a public health lawyer, um, patient navigator, and health professional, um, community organiza organizer, a health system administrator. So a lot of those questions and everything, um, you know, it's whole. It's a big spectrum is what you can do for the public health major. And I know that during their breakout session during summer orientation, they'll be able to answer that question further. Thank you. So question, I, I, I believe this is related to the DSP and choosing the first English course. So the question, I'll, I'll take the question. It says, if I take either course, can I still register for classes? Um, and so I, I'm assuming that you're talking about the uh, English 100A or um, the 100W class. And so the, the answer is, is yes. Um, you can register for classes, uh, you know, in addition to that 100A or 100W course. You can still register for, you know, your three or four other classes, depending on how many units you want to take. 
Um, this question is related to the registration appointments um, and where you can find that. Hugo, I'll, I'll put this one to you. Where will we find our registration appointment date? So where will they be able to locate that? You will find that on your MySSU page. Uh, on your lower right hand uh, side of your screen, there'll be a, a little box that says enrollment uh, date. You click on that and you select um, fall term and then it'll, it'll you just read all that information. That's where your uh, registration appointment uh, date is listed. Right, so that's in your MySGSU account to the right hand side, like Hugo was saying, log in using your one dot SJSU login. When you, when you click to go into your MySJSU, you will have to select student center before you see that box with the enrollment date and time. Okay. Thank you. So there's more questions related to the WST and, and DSP. So I'll try to answer one of them is a two part question. So I'll answer the first part of it about the WST. Um, the question is, does the DSP replace the WST graduation requirement? Um, and so for this time, um, due to COVID-19 and the, the social distancing requirements, the DSP is in a sense taking the place of the WST for this summer. So all of you joining us this fall are not required to take the WST. That exam has been suspended. Um, you will not need to go back and take the WST later. Um, if you take your, you know, your 100A or 100W class this semester. And so the DSP is giving you um, more information on how to choose a class. That's, that's really all. Um, if in the end you choose 100A, uh, that means that you'd like a little bit more time to develop your writing ability. Um, to learn, you know, APA citation format, to really learn how to research, um, how to brainstorm, how to outline, how to draft. And so you take 100A, pass that, and then take 100W. For those of you after completing the DSP, you feel that you're ready to go on to 100W, you start with 100W, um, which is an upper division writing course. So we have a few people that are um, asking questions or about whether they have to take uh, 100W because they've completed all of their English requirements. Um, the English requirements that you've most likely completed are lower division English requirements, right? So um, your area A2 and your area A3. And so what we're talking about now is an upper division writing requirement. It is a university graduation requirement as well as a major requirement. So yes, you will still need to take uh, 100W at San Jose State, um, unless you've taken a class that's deemed equivalent somewhere else, which is uh, rarely seen. Okay, so yes, that is a requirement. Um, this next question is about public health. Um, so the question is, when will the new public health core classes be presented? So, it's for Talisha. Yeah, so the public health core classes will be presented at the town. They are having town hall meetings through Zoom. Um, if you go on their website, Google SJSU Public Health and Recreation Department, they are having town hall meetings as well. And also, um, the whole presentation will be offered this summer. Talisha, there's one uh, scheduled this afternoon at 4 o'clock if you want to get a head start. Oh, excellent. So yeah, there, just like Hugo just said, there is a town hall meeting today at four o'clock through Zoom. So if you go on the public health uh, department website, or as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and put that link on the chat right now. So then that way you can go ahead and participate in their Zoom meeting as well. Thank you. There's also a question about viewing this webinar. So I'll post this to Jeremy. Maybe you can add the the link to the chat. The question is, what is the link to view this webinar? Yeah, so essentially what's going to happen most likely is after this presentation is complete, we've been recording both the, uh, both the freshman session and this transfer session. We'll uh, probably post it on our website. In addition, we may potentially email it out to people that were interested in attending this presentation, although I'm not 100% sure about 
that particular instance, but most likely it'll be posted on our website, the uh, link uh, that I posted earlier. Actually, you know what? It's going to be at the college website. Oh, and I just posted that in the chat. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, you bet. Um, the next question I think would be best answered by Tony. Um, do you foresee classes continuing to remain online in the fall? Yes, most all classes during the fall 2020 semester will be offered online. Um, the only exceptions to that are courses that have labs that um, make it difficult to put online. But of course, social distancing will be, um, you know, an important feature of those courses. The campus is taking all that into consideration and we're trying to move as many classes as possible to the online platform for fall 2020. Um, all instructors are going to receive special training and how to develop online content. They've received some of that already, but there will be additional training this summer. Um, so yes, we foresee most all courses going to the online platform for fall 2020. Thank you. Um, so there's a, okay, you're, you're welcome. We're, we're happy to provide the link for you. Um, so the next question is related to matriculation. So I think there are some, some questions that are being answered in written form. And so I think some of those might be um, ones that we should answer live. So let me try to summarize um, for everyone. Um, so I think the overall kind of question is, um, folks are going to see when their enrollment date is and they don't see it posted, right? It's not there, um, and they're wondering why it isn't there since they've chosen us. Thank you for choosing us. Mm -hmm. And they've completed next steps, um, but it says they're not matriculated. So Tony, can you kind of address, walk us through that again? Sure, certainly. So I think we're, we're talking about our students who've completed next steps, paid the deposit, the $250 deposit, um, and have um, accepted an orientation date. So you will not really, you will not be considered a matriculated student until after you attend orientation because that's a requirement. Not attending orientation can actually remove, will prevent you from being matriculated. So it's really important that you attend orientation this summer. Um, orientation will be online. Orientation dates will not change. And you're looking at right now the team that will work with you during orientation, plus a couple of other advisors from another unit. Um, so after you complete orientation, you'll be officially a matriculated student, but you will have to, um, you know, attend classes in the fall and main to maintain that matriculated status. If you do not attend classes in the fall, you can lose that matriculated status. Yeah. Absolutely. And just to reiterate um, the information that Maya shared earlier, you will all be able to see what your appointment date is for fall registration on June 8th and registration will begin June 15th. Um, we, we realize that your registration could begin prior to your orientation date. And so that's why after May 18th, we're going to change our focus from working with the continuing students during spring 2020 to making sure that they're successful. We're going to change our focus to working with the newly admitted students for the summer. So, you know, beginning of the week of May 18th, please, you know, visit our website, follow the instructions to make an appointment or call those numbers during the times that we um, indicated and make an appointment with one of the members that you see up on the screen here. And we'll be happy to work with you to help you select your classes and so that you're ready to go um, even if that's before your orientation date and then we'll see you again at orientation just to confirm everything is working well for you and also you can have follow-up appointments with us throughout the summer great thank you tony you bet this next question is about orientation um i'll take this one the question is will orientation still be in person and um Unfortunately, no, we won't be able to meet you in person this summer at orientation. It will be a virtual orientation, just like um, this admitted Spartan day. 
series. So it will be a, a one day orientation. You'll start in the morning. There'll be some programming related to um, financial aid and tuition fees, um, diversity and inclusion. And then you'll meet with us. We'll have a, a group advising session. We'll give you important information about upper division GEs, transition to San Jose State, all that good stuff. And then you'll break out and meet with your individual major advisors in your departments. And so they'll give you more information specific to your majors and the curriculum, um, how to get um, connected with your advisor. In some cases, you have an assigned advisor based on your last name. Um, and if you have not already registered by that time, you'll be able to register um, on that day um, and ask any additional questions that you have of us or the major advisor. So again, I just wanna be clear because it could be a little bit confusing at this point. Even if you register before your orientation date, you still must come to orientation. Okay, so don't forget that piece. So you'll see your, your registration date is posted on June 8th. If you go before June 8th and you don't see it there, that's okay. You, you probably shouldn't see it, right? It's too early. So June 8th, you'll see your enrollment date. The earliest that any of you can register is June 15th. That's the very earliest, okay? And then um, you'll have your orientation date that you'll go to, which is mandatory, right? If you do not come to orientation, um, understanding that it's virtual, that it's online, um, all of your classes could be dropped, right? And you will not be able to attend San Jose State. So your admission, if you don't come to the orientation, would be rescinded and you'd have to reapply for admission. So don't forget about us. We're gonna send you a ton of messages, mm -hmm. right? About orientation. Um, and we're, we're really excited to, uh, to talk with you more in depth about your fall classes then. I think that might be the last okay. of the questions. Well, that's perfect because we're just about out of time. So don't everyone log off yet. I want to share one more slide with you. But I do want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the great questions. Um, but before you leave, let me share something with you. This will be in response to many of your questions. So we want to stay connected with you. So um, please, if you have any additional questions or would like to set up a phone or online appointment, please visit our website at www.sjsu.edu forward slash chhs hyphen ssc. That will take you to our website at the landing page there. There are instructions on how to make an appointment with us. Um, also, please continue to follow us on our social media handled by Talisha. Um, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and as we shared already, currently our advising resources are being focused on helping our continuing students finish successfully the spring 2020 semester. Um, but during summer, our focus will shift to the newly admitted students. So for our transfer students, we will see you at summer orientation but please feel free to schedule an appointment after May 18th because we know you um, will be able to register beginning um, 6, uh, 15, June 15th, which could be before your orientation day, okay? So thank you so much for attending our event. It was a pleasure being here to help support you and we look forward to continuing to support you. So stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you at orientation. Take care now, bye-bye. <laughs>